Hello everyone, I'm The Weather Dude. Welcome back, and today we're going to be talking about Invest 93L and 94L. Before I get started though, be sure you are subscribed, so I hope your subscribe button looks like uh, the way it's shown here. All gray and the notification bell is on. So hopefully you guys are subscribed, consider subscribing, and let's get started with today's video. So, Invest 93L and 94L. So our other system, 92L, Obviously, they don't get invest names right away. Obviously, if it becomes an area to watch more, they'll name it an invest. But 92L is just weathered away near the Cabo Verde Islands. So we had well, we had three plus the one I was watching. Now we're down to two plus the wave I'm still watching, which is probably going to leave Africa probably shortly. I mean, uh, it still looks pretty vigorous, so we'll keep an eye on it. But for this video specifically, we're going to be talking about these two right here. Um, invest 93L, which is back here, has a 40% chance of uh, development. And hopefully we will get uh, some updates because we're close to the 8 o'clock update. Um, not in yet. And if it's not in by the time I finish this video, as I'm recording it, I'll be sure to put it in the community tab, of course, uh, if there is any changes. So with 93L, showers and thunderstorms, uh, pretty much halfway between the Cabo Verde Islands and the Lesser Antilles. Um, they seem to have diminished, although we have seen a little regen in thunderstorms. And its conditions are somewhat conducive for development, so... Um, we could see a move. It's still moving towards the west southwest as well, which means uh, it's moving in more so this direction, meaning it could stay further south. Um, we'll see if it makes a bend back to the north or not. Then we have 94L, which just got named an invest earlier today. Uh, it's an elongated area of low pressure, se several hundred miles east of the Windward Islands. We're seeing disorganized showers and storms. Conditions are favorable for some gradual development, and we could see a tropical depression or a storm. Uh, in the next few days as it moves 10 to 15 miles an hour. But we could see it reach the Lesser Antilles by late tomorrow and move through the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico on Tuesday and then Hispaniola in the middle of the week and maybe even the Bahamas and Florida after that. So definitely want to uh, keep an eye if you're uh, there. Uh, rainfall and gusty winds to wherever the storm may move near. Um, so let's look at 93L first of all. Um, I'll, I'll actually put the satellite loop up. I do have that set up as well. So don't mind the still image, but uh, sustained winds of 30 miles per hour. Uh, pressure is about 10, 12, so it's remaining pretty steady. Uh, if we look at it on the satellite loop, you can see that the spin is still there. Um, and honestly, I think there looks like there's two areas of center. This may be the surface center down here, and I'm picking up some sort of mid-level center up here. So, Because I could definitely see a swirl in both of these areas. So... Um, doesn't look very organized because if the low and mid-level centers were, on, were basically, you know, stacked on top of each other, we would call that a stack system, um, and that would be obviously what you would want. So if we look at the coordinates here, you can see it's sitting, I mean, as of 2 o'clock at least, it, it was sitting at about uh, 44 degrees west and about 14 uh, degrees north. So if we look at that, it would make sense that this is the surface center right here because it's moving west-southwest. That would make sense. Um, but the fact that we do have another area of rotation here, this looks to be a mid-level center. So I'll put there. So this is the surface center, and then this is the mid-level center right here. So if these two were to stack on top of each other, it would be uh, obviously more organized. So the convection seems to be associated more so with the mid-level center. There has been a flare-up of thunderstorms, but that's really it. Look at the conv any convection, little convection that was there near the surface center has since diminished, which is telling me that the surface flow is weakening. Uh, and the mid-level center is continuing its track towards the west. So we'll keep an eye on 93L. So let's go over some um, some uh, positioning here. And you can see, so as of 2 o'clock, again, 44 degrees west and 14 degrees north just about. Um, and if we look at the model tracking, um, we're just getting the 18Z data in now. But the data does pretty much take it in that west-southwesterly direction. So at least the model seemed to agree on that short term. We'll see if any long term forecasts come out again you can see it here on the GEFS tracks but if we look at the GEPS tracks it's changed a little bit because before all the models had it going north like pretty relatively quickly they had it at the sea and I thought wait that couldn't be right because it's moving west southwest according to observations and the National Hurricane Center so now a few models have brought it a bit further south one takes it towards the southeastern US a few even take it through the Caribbean if you want my honest opinion for the moment, I think it has a pretty good chance of going through the Caribbean because it's on that west-southwest path. Um, not saying that doesn't mean it couldn't turn north, but I'm saying my opinion right now, I think it could move uh, past the Antilles and then through the Caribbean Sea. 
Uh, we will see, no pun intended. Um, but if it does move towards the north, the models that do have that do have it becoming pretty strong. Um, that could be because of jet stream energy, cold front energy. Um, that could be a reason. Also, maybe if it moves north, it might slow down a little bit. So uh, that could be also a reason because if there's no steering, then it's going to move slower and have more time to strengthen. So that would be why maybe they show strengthening. Um, but if we look at the model intensity guidance, plenty of models still do make it a tropical storm. And the National Hurricane Center, remember, uh, that goes out the next five days. So a lot of models do also have it becoming a TS um, before or even up to five days out. But remember, the percentages that the National Hurricane Center puts up, they put the chances of it becoming a depression. So these two storms have a 40 and 50% chance of becoming a tropical depression, not a tropical storm. So they don't guarantee that. I'm just saying, you know, that's why in their, if you read their discussions, it always says could become a tropical depression on both of them. And that's why, because the chance, their percentages aren't based on tropical storm, they're based on uh, tropical depression. So let's move on to 94L. Looks a bit better on satellite to me, especially on still image. Um, sustained winds also 30 miles an hour. Pressure is a bit lower at 1,011 millibars. So, I mean, am I going to say that means it's a tad stronger? Maybe. Um, but I would say that it does look... Uh, pretty good on a satellite representation. Um, it's sort of hard to make out a center, uh, if, but if we look at the 2 p.m. Um, update, it was sitting at about uh, 50, 53 degrees west and about 11 or 12 degrees north. So uh, based off of that, I would probably say it's somewhere in here somewhere. Um, although this one is moving probably west-northwest, so you can see uh, right here. So it's moving in a northwest path towards the islands. I remember, like what we saw with Elsa, land interaction will also be a big deal. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but it is moving towards the north and west. All right. So probably, I would say, an elongated, broad, low-pressure center. Probably in there somewhere. Um, there has been some flare-ups of convection. And that's definitely one thing to watch. Right? We saw one flare up here and another one down here. So we'll watch that for some uh, potential means of strengthening. But... Honestly, the other one looked a bit more organized apart from the low and mid-level center being apart. This one, um, there definitely looks like there's a swirl somewhere, like a tropical wave kind of swirl, but nothing really clear, clearly represented. Um, so again, here's your low center, 53 west, 13 degrees north, excuse me. But look at the model tracking guidance, and surprisingly, the models are like pretty much right on point agreeing on this. Like especially for seven days out, this is not what I was expecting. Like look at these models. Um, pretty much all taken through the Bahamas and near the east coast of Florida. Like, if I made a cone, it would pretty much look like that, apart from, like, one outlier, which is the HWFI. So, really on agreement for, like, like 9 out of 10 of these models, like, in agreement. Uh, and that's really good. Now, notice how some of them uh, do bring it over land a bit more, right? Because an eastern edge on the track would still bring it out to sea more, while... The western edge of that track, even though the models are very close together, still one little change in the track. West track would be more land interaction, east track would be less. But the fact that these models are agreeing like this is really, I mean, I won't say weird, but it's uh, its something you want to see. It means that they're coming to agreement on the storm. Not saying that this is going to be the 100% uh, track, but definitely some good news that they're agreeing. Even the GEFS model tracks, look at these, right? They, now they bring it a little bit more south. Our last set of model tracks sort of brought it like, sort of like this um these ones bring a little bit further south like closer to uh like naples and uh fort myers and miami so we'll see but for now the track is like and pretty much um when i look at these i like to look at the track not really the strength because the, um the strength could be a little bit inaccurate sometimes but definitely look at the track because the spaghetti models are definitely um known for that but the geps though i mean it couldn't be more it couldn't be more over the place um, so we got the eastern edge of the track, bringing it out near Bermuda. We got the western track, bringing it down to Mexico and Central America. Uh, so it's a pretty hot mess. Um, we got a bunch of models that bring it in the Gulf, some the Caribbean, some the East Coast. So GEPS is all over the place here. Um, intensity models with uh, 94L here. Definitely bring it as a tropical storm status for most of them. Some even do make it a Category 1. And looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies, I don't see why not, apart from our land interaction. Because if you look, both of our systems are pretty much sitting in this area of warm water right now. 
94 L if it tracks in this direction, also warm water. Again, though, you have to worry about land interaction. And let's say one or both of the systems get in the Gulf. Yeah, you might want to watch out. I mean, I'll pull up the sea surface temperature graph on windy.com, but you'll see it's very, very warm there in the Gulf of Mexico. So water is above average. I would say check in that department. All right, here we have the dry air. So here is 94. Yeah, I'll, I'll note it down. Here's 94 back here and 93 back here. They're relatively close together, and you'll see in some models uh, what that means. But 94 in front, 93 in the back. You would think it's the other way around, but it's actually not. It has to do with when it gets named. But dry air, again, as we keep seeing, dry air, any dry air that's there is pretty much retreating. So there is a little bit to the north and west of the system, which is why you don't see too much convection on the northwest side. Uh, we've got low center here, low center here. So um, dry air, but it could be withered away. It's not a loop, so I can't really say. I can't really say, really. Um, 93L, a little bit of dry air on its northern side. We'll have to watch out for that for some withering thunderstorms. But uh, as for wind shear, all right, so let's get a look. So wind shear, uh, we just got the APM update in, so there you go, perfect. Uh, 94L is up to 60, 60% uh, chance, and tropical storm watches or warnings could be required in shorter than normal lead times for the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. So we could see tropical storm watches and warnings go up. I would probably say um, warnings would probably be for the Lesser Antilles and the Windwards and probably watches for the Vir or for Puerto Rico. Virgin Islands, maybe even a tropical storm warning too. Um, nothing out yet, so I don't want to spook anybody, but just saying that would probably be the order because it all depends on timing as well. But uh, 93L is still 40%, but uh, 94L just got up to 60%. So I'm glad I was able to get the update in as we're still uh, recording here. So And it also gives us an update to the track or where the low is. Um, 53.13 on 94L. So if we look at that on the on the wind shear map, it's pretty much sitting in this zone here. So not much wind shear. And if it were to track in this direction, not much shear either. So really relatively low shear in this area right now. So 93L is sitting at about 44 degrees west and 14 degrees north. So I would say pretty much right in here, pretty much so here's 94 and 93 behind it. So not much shear in either areas. So that's a trend that means we could see some strengthening. Um, so here's the HWRF model here um, for 93L. This is the 18Z run that's coming in. I don't think this takes into account the APM update, so keep that in mind. But notice, here is a surface center, and you might be wondering why I have these relative humidity. I'll show you. Um, and here, these dark green patches, these are all like the little areas of stronger thunderstorms associated with the surface low. It's there. But notice the surface low, and notice this other swirl. That's right here. That is the mid-level center like I was talking about earlier. And notice, they're far apart. They're not stacked properly. And that's what we need for an organized tropical system. So as you see, if as it continues moving west, as it hits the islands, not really, I mean, they don't really join together. This is 84 hours out pretty much, 87. Here's the surface center and the mid-level center is down there with high pressure. And if high pressure is there, that means it's gonna be sinking air. So probably a weakening system. So you got your mid-level center here, you got your surface center here. So HWRF doesn't do much with 93L. However, if we jump over to 94L, all right, and you'll notice the mid-level winds sort of cut across like this, which means the storm is getting sheared apart. And then you got your dry air pretty much back here. But notice the mid-level winds sort of make like a, a hump motion. And that's what a tropical wave is. It's pretty much, because if you think about it, a low pressure system is like this, right? Well, a tropical wave is half of that, so, so just the bump. Uh, and, and that's like the sort of wind motion around tropical waves. So you can see as it continues to move west, it pushes back that dry air. It becomes a lot more tightly wound up. Um, still got a mid-level center down here, but the low is dropping in pressure. We got a pretty good uh, northern band forming around it here, both northeast, north, and northwest sides of the system. Uh, and then it continues to move through Haiti and Hispaniola, and then after it moves over those mountains, it really falls apart. But of course, what if it doesn't do that, you know? And then we just got a low with not much moisture and mid-level winds pretty much shearing it off. So um, that's the HWRF model, initial strengthening, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, so here's a GFS model, and you can see um, 94L is the one that a lot of the models are keeping an eye on, and the one that they're forecasting to strengthen, which kind of makes sense because, I mean, it has higher odds of development from the National Hurricane Center.
But notice, all right, here we have 94L going up the East Coast now long term. I think this is the other wave I was talking about. That is not 93L. But here is 94L and a GFS long, this is long term, mind you, forecasted going up the East Coast. So this is pretty much, I wouldn't say a duplicate, but very close to a duplicate of ELSA. Uh, and that would be pretty interesting. But uh, except that it's going to go north of the islands instead of south. But this pretty much looks like an ELSA track right now, which is very weird. Uh, if we look at the Canadian model, all right, so let's bring that back to the beginning. And you can see Canadian, pretty much a similar story. All right, the only question is, what will land interaction do? So there's 94L right there going off the west coast of Florida. And then um, landfall, according to this right now, near Mobile, Alabama, or Biloxi, Mississippi. And then pretty much making its way due north. So both models, GFS and Canadian, really uh, shedding some light on the situation here. And the European, what about them? Well, European brings it right here near the Bahamas, then up the east coast of Florida and through south and North Carolina, and then off the east coast. So definitely going to have to watch both of these systems, although the models seem to be enjoying 94L a lot more right now. And, of course, a quick flash for the uh, 8 p.m. update. 40% chance still with 93L, 94L, up to 60%. And they just put out a message saying that we could see tropical storm watches or warnings. So if that happens, I'll be sure to put that in uh, my community tab. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching. I am DeWeatherDude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.